Today's date is August 18th, 2011, and if you found your way to this video, you probably have a good idea of Elenin, the comet denoted C-2010. As you probably already know, there is a celestial body heading towards the Earth's orbital path, and there is much speculation as to the consequences of this discovery. There are trillions of celestial bodies in our solar system, ranging in sizes from what we would call particles, to comets, asteroids, planets, and other large rocks all orbiting the sun in specific, barely predictable paths. Unfortunately, and this will be the driving point of this video, is that there is still much speculation on the exact mass of C-2010, aka Elenin. At this time, the public is to believe that C-2010 is a comet of astronomically average proportions and that NASA even went as far to nickname the comet Wimpy. However, there is far too much evidence to support otherwise, and that this comet may actually be a brown dwarf star, a partner star to our star, a partner star to our sun in our solar system. Well, the public immediately may respond with, well, if this comet-sized object is supposed to be a sun, wouldn't we see it easily as our sun? Wouldn't we have been burned to death already? This is not necessarily true. Without going into much detail yet, there are objects in our solar system with great masses, with comparatively small volumes, many of which are classified as stars which haven't reached critical mass, are stars that have reached the end of their life cycle and all that remains are dense gravity altering cores. The point I'm driving at is that current data would show that this particular celestial body has an orbital path around the sun that would suggest an object of a much higher mass is entering our inner solar system. A reasonable comparison can be drawn to Halley's Comet which has a similar wide elliptical path. So let's give this animation a quick pause and let's take a look at this orbital diagram for Halley's Comet. Here we see Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and here we have the path of Halley's Comet. Okay, let's go back to our animation of C-2010, Elenin. And we're going to start to zoom out slowly. And then we're going to see Jupiter. And there's Saturn. And there we have Uranus pop, pop in. And then finally Neptune. And here's Pluto at the very breaches of our solar system. And here we have this massive wide elliptical path that compared to what's the generally accepted path for Halley's Comet it appears to be two if not three times wider than the path of Halley's Comet and the only cause for such a wide path from the center of our Sun would have to indicate that the mass of the object is much greater than that of a comet. An object of a smaller mass, you would think, would eventually just float away from our solar system and never return. However, this object has and will return to the path that it is in right now. But look at this path. Only some massive object could be held within Earth's grab uh, within the sun's gravitational pull. More evidence. Let's check out Halley Comet Wikipedia entry of all places. However, they do list the mass for Halley's Comet, which is 2.2 times 10 to the 14,000 grams, kilograms. That's a relatively small object in astronomical terms. However, our new comet, C2010, where's the mass? Why don't we know a mass for this object? You know, they, if, if you were able to calculate all these other, uh, you know, calculations through whatever high-level math you, you choose to get there, 
don't you need to know the mass of the object? So going back to our simulation, let's zoom in to something more useful to us. If this comet is not as big as they say it is, or by big I mean massive, uh, we might have a serious problem on our hands because if this comet and or dwarf star or whatever you want to call it, let's leave it at celestial body, has enough mass to even slightly alter the Earth's trajectory or maybe, maybe even stretch it or compress it or because the Earth is in a solid round shape. The Earth is more of an elliptical shape. So if you introduce another celestial body with great mass and put it within reasonable distance to the Earth, you're going to see earthquakes, um, fault lines, rupturing, tornadoes, volcanoes, everything. But basically, in conclusion, an object with enough mass introduced to the center of our solar system can wreak havoc on the rotational path and the delicate gravitational forces holding our planets in line with the sun. Uh, the object surely won't hit us, but it doesn't have to, to completely render the Earth uninhabited.